Today, I'm going to show you how to pick a second-hand folding bike. I'll give you a few tips and tricks so that you can find a second-hand folding bike and get started on your folding bike adventure. The first thing to look at when buying your second-hand folding bike is the frame. Now, generally, there are two types of frame that you'll be looking at, a steel frame or an aluminium frame. There are benefits to each type of frame. The steel frames are generally stronger, but they can rust. An aluminium frame is lighter, but it is not as strong as a steel frame. These are things to consider if you plan on carrying a lot of weight on your folding bike. You should look at the frame carefully and make sure there are no cracks or fractures or excessive rust. A little bit of rust can be cleaned off, but you should probably avoid a very rusty bicycle. The next thing to consider when buying your folding bike is to look at the folding mechanisms. Avoid excessive wear and tear on the folding mechanism. You can tell if the folding mechanism is in good order by opening and closing it. If there is any play in the folding mechanism, you may be able to tighten it by hand or with a simple tool. It's a good idea to avoid buying a second-hand folding bike that has a broken folding mechanism. The next thing to consider is the folding mechanism on the handlebars. This is really important because this is where a lot of your weight is going to be when you're riding the bike. You do not want the folding mechanism to come open when you're riding along. Make sure that it closes and is sturdy and there is no play. You can find lots of different types of folding bike handlebars and this bike has a two-part folding handlebar. So check these before you buy. The next thing to check when you're buying a second-hand folding bike is the seat and seat post as well as the seat post clamp. You don't want the seat post to have any play and move on you when you're riding, and you definitely don't want it to drop down on you when you're riding along. Check for cracking around the seat post clamp, and also check the seat post to make sure it doesn't slip down when you put weight on it. Some seat posts have a powder coating that does wear off over time, and this can cause the seat post to slip even if the seat post clamp is maintained in good order. You can replace the seat post and I would recommend doing this if it does have excessive wear. The seat should not have any movement where it attaches to the seat post. If it does, you can adjust this with simple tools. If the seat is not comfortable for your requirements, you can always replace it with a more comfortable seat, like I have done here with this memory foam seat. Wheels and tires are another thing to check when you're buying a second-hand folding bike. Although you can replace the tires easily, the wheels might be a little bit difficult to source. Generally what you can do to make sure that the wheels are true is flip the bike upside down and spin the wheels just to make sure there's no buckling. Also pay attention to the spokes and make sure that none are broken. Although they are fairly easy to replace, you will want to make sure that none of the spokes are broken because this can cause the wheel to become buckled. The next thing to look at when buying your second-hand folding bike is the gears and running gear. I'm talking about the chain, the gear cluster, the crank, and the big cog here. Make sure that there's not excessive rust on the chain or gears. However, some rust can be easily cleaned off. I like to look for bikes that have the Shimano derailleur system. I find it easy to maintain myself with simple tools, and you can get parts second-hand or brand new fairly easily anywhere in the world. Shimano derailleur system has always worked well for me even over tens of thousands of kilometers of touring. Let's move on to the brakes. Brakes and brake levers are interchangeable with other kinds of bikes so I tend to go with these cantilever type brakes rather than a disc brake. This way I can always find parts anywhere in the world either brand new or second hand that will fit my bike and that I can replace myself. Always test the brakes before you ride a bike and make sure they're in good working order. If they do need replacement, you can always find brakes like this online or just pick them off a second-hand bike. If the brake shoes are worn down, you will want to replace them. But again, you can find these parts easily, either brand new from a big box store or second-hand. The next thing to look at is the controls. Anything that you have on the handlebars here should be in good order, including the brake levers, the gear shifter, the bell, and the hand grips. 
make sure that where the parts of your body touch the bike are in good working order before you ride. You can service any of these parts yourself using simple tools. When it comes to brake levers, I prefer to use these aluminium cast brake levers. I find they're a bit stronger than the plastic ones, but the plastic ones still work fine. Just make sure that they're in good order. When it comes to pedals, make sure that you have good sturdy pedals to put your feet on. I use these simple block type pedals. You can pick them from any secondhand bike or you can buy them. Just make sure that if you're replacing the pedals, that you remember that one of the threads is threaded backwards so that it doesn't come open when you're riding it. It should have a mark on the pedal to say that it's reverse threaded. When it comes to carriers, you can always add these later. But if you're buying a bicycle that already has a carrier, just make sure that it has all the bolts still in there. Most of the rear carriers on folding bikes are rated to 10 kilograms or 20 pounds of luggage. If you'd like to see how I get secondhand bike parts from the junkyard, check this video over here. Or if you want to see a secondhand folding bike on a cycle tour, watch this video. Thank <laughs> you.